With the new tribe Nagas coming soon, I thought it would be really cool to try and theory craft what I think uh, a cool tribe would look like. So here are some custom Battlegrounds card and a custom tribe that I put together that I think is really cool. I made my own mechanic and my own ways of scaling and like trying to interact with the game. It would be really cool to me at least to see uh, all of the ideas here that uh, I had. And I hope you guys enjoy some custom BG cards from me. And that you're hyped for Nagas happening soon, because so am I. The first thing I want to mention is I hope that Sephim gets reworked and Seafood Slinger and Prester. So that's the first thing I hope that happens when the new tribe releases. So with that in mind, let's look at what I think Nagas could look like. Here's Dozing Kelp Keeper, the tier 1 card that I made. Uh, with a new keyword sync. Now I made only one card for each tier. I didn't want to go through the effort of making a whole custom tribe yet but if you would like to see that let me know dozing kelp keeper is a 4-4 on tier 1 which is the best stat line we've ever seen but it has sync and sync basically means that once it dies it's gone so if this card dies it will sync and it will just remove itself from your board so that's a big downside even though you get a 4-4 dude on the board early that probably trades a lot and is going to save you health if it happens to die in combat in a couple turns or if you face a put bot on turn 1 or someone else picking a dozing kelp keeper against you you already lost your tempo on your board. So there's a death rattle that gains you two extra gold at the start of next turn. So essentially this card uh, is just gonna refund you some money that you can use next turn. This is really cool. For example, if on turn one your dozing kelp keeper already dies, you'll have two extra gold, meaning you have six gold and you can buy two units on turn two so that way you at least don't fall behind too much but maybe this needs to be one gold maybe two gold is too much but it's still a net negative gold that you get so it's not a token card that generates you gold because you spend three gold buying this card if it dies you spend three gold on nothing you get two gold back in essence you lose one gold because if you buy a card normally you can sell it as well regaining that gold so if this is removed from your board you essentially lost a gold but it kind of carries over but maybe this is too strong maybe it needs to go to gain two extra gold but that is the kind of the theme i want to work with uh, like you got the sync mechanic and cards that are big payoff in some sense but you could lose you know early so is it worth going with this risk saving health or maybe it's too risky it'll be up to you so high risk high reward is what i enjoy about this one job now keep in mind it has a death rattle meaning you could technically trigger this later on with macaw and baron and like generate some gold for the next turn that's probably pretty greedy but it it's possible or maybe with uh lich king it will be pretty good because if it dies you know you still get that extra gold tier 2 i made a merc water scribe it's only a 2-2 so really bad steps but end of turn give a friendly naga half of your stats now it's gonna keep its stats when it gives its stats so it's not like it's gonna lose stats whenever it buffs another naga uh, but this is the first scaling that we see on tier 2 so it's gonna give plus one plus one to another friendly naga on your board so let's say you have two of these they're so gonna give each other plus one plus one then another plus one plus one then plus two plus two plus two plus two and so on as they both scale each other up and it can grow pretty well uh, so this is just early tempo on the board compared to other scaling like party rock elemental uh, and like the old school iron sensei that we had i don't think there's anything too crazy i think this is fine especially since it's a 2-2 itself it could snowball into the end game and if you buff this up let's say you pick this card in the mid game or the end game and you're somehow able to already put the stats to a 10 10 like you have a major domo buffing this and put it first you'll be putting some great stats already onto other cards on your board and buffing your nagas is gonna have other synergies that we'll see in a second but yeah i i just like the design I like the card that you know scales up but as it gets skilled itself it has potential to scale more so that way it isn't just an early game thing like party rock elemental for example is only good in the early game because it gives only plus one plus one and doesn't really scale up the further you go but this card has potential in any stage of the game because you're able to actually buff this card up and that way snowball anyway I, i'm so hyped i feel like i'm actually like doing a presentation of, of these cards that i made but i hope you like terry crafting all the ideas as well because whenever i see custom cards like this uh it just makes my head spin off all the possibilities in battlegrounds that are not there right now and uh all the cool synergies that we could have Ooh, this could make a tune really good actually like i haven't thought of everything yet so please leave everything down below that you think you could do with these cards like what good heroes it would be uh, like maybe with edwin that would be really good what other synergies with cards there are because i only had limited time so so, yeah i could see some cool stuff happening now tier 3 and this is where things get really interesting this card has sync so again if it dies during combat it's removed from your board entirely tirika kill test a 3-4 but it also has death rattle give your stats to your friendly minion permanently so if this card dies it it removes itself from the board but it also gives the 3-4 stats onto a random friendly minion permanently kind of like a trickster but it's not just health it's actually all of the stats so if you somehow get to keep this around and it doesn't die you can buff it up with the tier 2 cards or with other cards that we will see it could die and give a huge chunk of stats onto another card 
Also, it works with Macaw and Baron, so this could be your scaling. Let's say you have Macaw, Baron, uh, and you have a Syracas Cultist that you're scaling up. That could be a way to put stats on your board permanently. It turns anything basically into a Targal Sa, and this could be a tier 3 full body trickster. Of course, the risk is if it dies, you lost that part of your scaling if you have been putting effort into it. You need to refine it, so it's still risk reward. You gotta protect this. Uh, you gotta win your fights. If you lose your fight, you're, you're this is gone, so you can't really keep building onto this. It could just be something you buy onto your tree to just get plus three plus four stats. Like it doesn't have to be your main scaling. But I like how many uh, potential there is here. And as you will see next to sync, there is also a heavy death rattle touch like i really like the idea of uh having like a death rattle center tribe to scale because death rattle hasn't been used to scale death rattle is used as a spike let's look at b they have goldrin uh, max they have like buster death rattles are just a spike or something that does something but i wanted to turn a death rattle somehow into scaling and i think this does it really well and i think there's a lot of things i'm probably not thinking of right now well, let's say you have multiple cultists on the board and they buff each other and then oh that could be really spicy with Vol'jin, this seems really strong Let's say you have a battle monster, put battle monster onto the cultist. That could probably get out of hand. But then again, that's like one of the rare cases that, you know, it could be really good. And Vol'jin has like Terragosa trickster anyway and, and broken stuff. So I think it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, again, let me know what you think. Tier 4, we got a Coil Scar Commander, which is a 7-4 Naga. Uh, when a Death Rattle triggers, give all friendly Nagas plus 1 plus 1. So here's more Death Rattle synergy. So you have this on your board. And whenever a Death Rattle triggers, not only friendly, but also opponent Death Rattles. Meaning if, if you know your opponents are going to play Death Rattles, you're going to slap this card on the board and it's going to scale itself up a bit and your other Nagas. Now it's only other Nagas, I didn't do all tribes because that would be pretty strong. Now the issues, or the reason why I don't think this is like insanely strong is because it can die, right? Like if it dies, the effect doesn't work anymore. Your opponent might not have any Death Rattles. You have to play Death Rattle cards on the board and if they're not uh, Nagas, then or if those Nagas die, you don't even get that many buffs. Like if cards on your board die, let's say you have three Nagas left, you only get like plus three plus three for Death Rattle that triggers. So it could go like snowball really well if you have like a coiler on the board or your opponent plays a heavy death rattle comp and you have some decent nagas plus as we've seen naga buffs are very valuable uh, the tree drop really makes good use of buffs because it gives those buffs on death rattle onto other cards and also the two drop you know if that gets buffed it also gives at the end of the turn its stats half of its stats to another card so naga buffs will start to snowball and snowball and accumulate and this is what i really enjoyed i don't really know or i don't think we have any other tribes that do this like tribes either have the tier one and two scaling that falls off later like you always gotta transition into more late game stuff into better scaling but this is a tribe where the early game scaling can scale itself up and go maybe exponential into the late game and turn itself into an engine that way now i do think we need filler cards of course i put like one card in every tier to kind of give the idea of what i want this tribe to look like but we do need like some just bodies with maybe the vine shield maybe wind fury like actual good nagas that you know you can keep on your board so cold scar commander i think it has potential i don't think it's as strong as it seems but it could be maybe you can get a spike out of this also quick reminder that if you enjoy better guns content like this to subscribe to your channel especially with the new tribe the actual naga tribe dropping soon i'm gonna instantly be making a video about it so if you don't want to miss when things drop and what i think about it don't forget to subscribe and now the two most exciting ones because we're going to tier 5 and 6 tier 5 we got slithering death scale which is only a tree to better cry trigger a random friendly death rattle sink so you play this card and it's gonna during your shopping phase trigger a friendly death rattle and then it's just gonna sink so it's gonna kill itself off the board this is the first time we can trigger death rattles in shopping phase this means if it lands on a selfless you'll get a permanent shield onto some card on the board or the shop i think selfless can also trigger on shop minions this also works with trickster unless you have a trickster on the board you can trigger its death rattle give its health permanently to a card on your board and the cool thing with all of these nagas i think is that it doesn't necessarily have to be a full naga comp all of these cards also synergize with other comps or not all of the cards but like the tree drop whenever that dies it can give its stats to any card so to a mech it can land onto a deflective one with slithering death skill you can even play beast let's say you have a gold ring comp you can play gold ring then play Stuttering Death Scale, triggered Zeph Rattle, and you're gonna give plus five plus five to all your beasts on the board. It also works with Bran, so if you play Bran, you play this guy, you trigger two random Death Rattles. Of course, it works with the Nagas as well, like the tier one that is gonna give you extra gold, with the tier three that is just gonna give its stats to other cards. So now you can see more ways to scale up the board. If you have that tree drop and it's scaled up a bit and still alive, it hasn't sunken yet, you can just use Bran Slithering Death Scale and put those stats onto other cards. There's probably some broken things on a 
thinking of right now or death rattles that are too strong but i think i really like the concept of being able to trigger death rattles during shopping phase but it's gonna cost you a lot of money because it sinks meaning you can't really sell it back for that extra gold so it's pretty expensive and uh, i think it opens a lot of new doors and now the final one i want to talk about is a tier 6 card 8 1 Naga Queen Ashara. Death Rattle, swap a random friendly minion with one from your opponent for this combat only. Like this could be more of a meme, this could be either too broken or stupid, but uh, or it could be very underpowered and very weak. I'm not sure this is something you would have to test, but I think it's a really cool concept or idea to have a card that heavily interrupts your opponent. Right now all we have is Zap to really like counter some card for your, your opponent could have, or a Ghoul to counter Divine Shields. You used to have the Taunt, I forgot the name, Elistra I think. Uh, she was removed from the game because she was too strong, but that was a way to play around Cleaves and Wind Furies really well. But there's not that many Disruptor cards right now, so this is a really cool tech card that you just play, it dies, and then a card from your opponent is going to be swapped with one from your board. So it is a big payoff, like if you have a good board, you might not want to lose any card on your board, but that is maybe how you like beat a combo comp, if you want to really get rid of some combo pieces or a death rattle comp, or maybe someone has a million amalgams, you could steal one of those dongs. I think it has a lot of cool applications, especially since it works with Baron and Macaw. Maybe you just make a steal comp, you just play Baron Macaw, it triggers Queen Asharaj and you steal all of your opponent's minions. The issue is that then if you trigger it, the Queen Asharaj could be swapped onto you, your opponent's board and then your opponent can trigger Queen Asharaj and steal back some cards. So I think it's gonna turn your fights into a mess, like cards constantly swapping around going from your to your opponents. I don't think that is gonna be a comp in itself because even if you trigger this multiple times, I think your opponent should still be favored. Like I don't want this to be a card that you can just play and win, but I think yeah it just Gives my head so many ideas of, of comps you can build with this or ways you could counter your opponent and um, actually interrupt some powerful things that are otherwise maybe unbeatable. So I don't want this to be a card that you slap on the board and win, uh, which I don't think it is. Maybe it is, I don't know. So this is what I would like to see for Nagas or just a tribe that I made out of fun. And I think these are some cool interactions and some cool ways that you could, you know, scale in the game and maybe do some cool shit. If you want to see more custom cards, let me know as well because uh, this was fun and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.